Okay, there you go. Uh, let's just push this view outside so I have more space. I can see what's going on. So you see, I'm seeing what Meta did. People said the MetaQuest Pro is the best looking VR headset ever if money is not an issue. Thanks to eye attractive foliated rendering and the mini LED backlight for local dimming, we experienced it first handed with supported VR game like the Red Matter 2 right here. It's very good looking. Check out my review on this video right here. But is it the best looking in the late 2022? Well, this, is this video is going to find out. We are going to benchmark and compare it with the current best looking PC VR headset Vavio Aero right here and playing the same game Red Matter 2. We are going to show you side by side comparison both with eye attractive full rated rendering and bad lit mini LED. The result is not what you think. We also put the headset on casual VR users, not VR gamers. Oh, it oh, does wow, give you goggle face oh my still on your forehead. Yeah, because it was hot, dude! Wait, so are other reviewers not being 100% truthful on all those first impression videos? Let's dive right in and find out yarn. Hey, what's up everybody? It's your boy Hugh here. There are so many hypes around the MetaQuest Pro. We want to find out how true those hypes are. Unlike other reviewers, I spent 1500 US dollars on buying the MetaQuest Pro. No one sponsored my video except my own wallet. So my review should be pretty neutral. Image quality is key for me as a VR filmmaker and VR researcher. I want my AK VR film to look the absolute best. If you are a high-end VR gamer, spending good several hours a day within VR, then image quality means a lot to you as well. So let's see if the new MetaQuest Pro here can hold up compared to the best PC VR headset, Vavio Aero. Let me start by saying this is not a fair comparison. Vavio Aero costs almost 2,000 US dollars, just the headset alone. To use it, you also need to have the controller, which is sold separately. I have the Valve Index controller right here. You also need a base station setup for tracking. Then the most important thing is a very high-end gaming PC. Because of the eye tracked foliated rendering, can effectively reduce the load of GPU. Valvio Aero can actually run on a laptop PC without a full size display, display port or HDMI port, making it a pretty mobile setup compared to other PC VR headset. I'm going to use my Razer 15 laptop right here with RTX 3080. To truly realize the full potential of the Valvio Aero with 90 frames per second gameplay and full image resolution, we will recommend the brand new NVIDIA RTX 4090, released just last month. If you see some benchmarking video on the internet, the quality is insanely good for PC VR. But that will be very unfair to the MetaQuest Pro, as the price of the GPU can probably buy two MetaQuest Pro easily. Let's compare specs. MetaQuest Pro per eye resolution is only 1800 by 9020. Vavio Aero is significantly higher per eyes and 2880 by 2720. MetaQuest Pros use pancake lens, which is the trend moving forward in the industry. Meta said the benefit of pancake lens provide 37% higher pixel density than the Quest 2. Quest 2 PPD is 18, so 137% of 18 is roughly about 25 PPD. I have to do the math as Meta never tell you their PPD directly. 
Valvio Arrow here has 35 PPD, so it still has significantly higher pixel density than the MetaQuest Pro, even with pancake lens. The other benefit of pancake lens is edge-to-edge -edge sharpness. We can visually tell there is no chromatic aberration on MetaQuest Pro, and the edge has no distortion. Even though Valvio has a higher resolution, the edge does has distortion and chromatic aberration. The newer Valvio software update released recently does improve the edge sharpness and the CA issue, but having the hardware advantage like the pancake lens is always better. MetaQuest Pro now has continued IPD adjustment from 55 to 75 mm, but it's kind of faulty advertisement as I only see 58 to 71 IPD adjustment inside the headset, and it is still a manual IPD adjustment. Valvio Arrow here, on the other hand, is an automatic IPD adjustment using eye tracking. The headset reads your eyeballs every time when you put on the headset and mechanically adjusts the IPD from 57 to 73 millimeter. This guarantees the best resolution and the best clarity for using VR. Even though it is still a manual adjustment for the MetaQuest Pro, it does use eye tracking data to help you adjust your IPD when using full re-edit render application like the Red Matter 2. So it is still a huge step up compared to Quest 2 or any other headset out there in the market. But MetaQuest Pro gets my IPD wrong all the time. It moved between 60 to 63 millimeter. I guess my big glasses right here is the issue. Valvio Arrow has a peak brightness of 150 nits, and we don't know about MetaQuest Pro. But to tell you side by side, Valvio Arrow looks a lot brighter than Quest Pro. How about the black? Color and contracts. Well, both MetaQuest Pro and Valvio Arrow use backlit mini LED with local dimming. So we will test this next in a real gaming situation. They also both use eye attractive for related render, ETFR. The only two known VR headset nowadays using this technology. ETFR has the best impact on image quality. Let's talk about games. Valvio Arrow can play any PC VR game on Steam VR, and this is an important point. Almost all VR games can benefit from Valvio Eye Tracted for Reddit Rendering without any extra development from the game developers. This is huge. For MetaQuest Pro right here, at a time of recording, only one, one game is supported. So yes, one VR game versus all VR game on Steam. That is a big difference if you are a gamer. I'm sure more games will support Quest Pro, but you just need to wait. So for that one game, the Red Matter 2, which is better in terms of image quality? Well, you saw me play already on the Meta Quest Pro in this review video. Now let's see me play the exact same game on Vavio Arrow live. Okay, this is the Vario Arrow gameplay in Red Meta 2. Uh, also using the foliated render. Uh, so what I'm looking at right there should be fully focused. What I'm not looking at the peripheral vision is kind of blurry, and actually I can actually see in the Vario headset, which is really cool. Uh, I just play through the game, just like what I did with the headset behind me. Right, the Oculus, the, the, sorry, the Meta, the Meta Quest Pro, uh, and then I gotta do the same thing. Hopefully, you can see the image quality of the Vario Arrow. And you can see that the foliation render right there. So if I look around me, it's kind of blurry on the shine, but her is very clear. I think it's actually better than the Meta Quest Pro. Uh, with the full vision render with the uh, Vario. Again, this is my first time playing Remnant 2 on the Vario headset as well. So, be honest, I think the tracking, I think the tracking wise, I think the MetaQuest Pro is better. 
uh, than the Valve Index controller. I just feel like that it's more responsive. Let me see if I go behind me. Uh, if my base student can't see it, it will lose track. Uh, that, oh, see, I lose track right here. Uh, so this is not gonna happen in the Meta Quest Pro. So definitely for the controller wise, it's a win on the Quest Pro. But let me just open the door. Yeah, so the black, the black Vavio is definitely very good. They both had the mini LED back lit display. So the black is really true black and, and you can tell, you can see the massive of the, the space area. You can really see the black right here. But you see the same thing on the Metacross Pro as well. So the next thing I'm really curious is actually I'm gonna read text to see how readable the text in the Vario Aero headset compared to the Metacrest Pro. And that's one thing that like, if you do remote desktop working, uh, you really wanna use the headset to work, reading text uh, is, is kind of important, like, like for work. So let's find out. Uh, let me make sure that I can open the display. So look at that, I get really close. Look at that, if I get really close, I actually like the text get blurrier. Look at the foliation render. At work. I think the Photovision render is more so than the, uh, the Vavio compared to the MetaQuest Pro. So, look at that. Uh, I want you to really look at, like, I, I look close on the text right here. You see it? Oh my god, it's really good. I can scan it. The internet lacks what the Meta Quest Pro attractive for related rendering gameplay looks like through the lids. We built this little capture glasses device with the Insta360 Go 2 to really see through the lids. Here is the side by side comparison result, the first time ever on the internet. First, we have the Meta Quest Pro. Sorry for the flickering, as the refresh rate of the Quest Pro is at 90Hz. You see, the image quality is really impressive. Also, thanks to the wide angle lens, you see the eye attractive foliated rendering at work. Looking at the space rock, from pixelated to fully in focus as my head turns. Now, take a look at Vavio Arrow through the lens. Vavio Arrow is better in general quality with less aliasing on details. The color is more pop as well. With better use of local dimming. Let's put them side by side together. What do you think? I'm very curious about your thought. Comment below and let me know. Finally, Let's talk about comfortability. Almost all reviewers said the MetaQuest 2 here is very comfortable to wear. That is usually from the perspective of a heavy VR user and compare it to MetaQuest 2 right here. We put the MetaQuest Pro on Kili and asked her to watch some VR videos. Uh, hey look, I can even drink water while I'm in the metaverse. I couldn't do this before and try some MR experience and drawing apps like Gravity Sketch. She's not a VR gamer and is a very casual VR user. Basically, she uses VR whenever I ask her to for work. Here is uncut feedback from her first experience when I told her the camera was not rolling. Uh, I can feel the headset processing and downloading an app. On my head, it's kind of uncomfortable. Like I can feel the heat. Um, ugh. Take it off? I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't like that feeling. It's probably not healthy. Yeah, it's kind of warm. Show me what's going on. It's kind of warm, like right here. Where? Like right in here. Because it's processing, it? yeah. It's like downloading that 16 gigabyte um, app and it's warm on my head. Like I was feeling it right here on my forehead, which was weird, but I could definitely feel it. Feel the heat. Look at all my makeup stains. It's gross. So makeup stain does get on the headset and you can't get it off, huh? Yeah, it's kind of hard to get it off. Yeah, I need like a little wipey. Are you gonna buy me a new headset? 
if you make it or make a beach. Yeah, well, actually, yeah? I'm just gonna take this. Oh, wow, your head is. Oh my god, it's red. <laughs> yeah, because it was hot, dude. You do get a headset face. No. <laughs> yes, okay. To be fair, Fabio Arrow also leave you a goggle face after 15 minutes of heavy usage. So, from a comfortability standpoint, none of the VR or MR headset is comfortable yet for general consumer. If that is the standard for VR immersion, we still had a long way to go to make things smaller, lighter, and more immersive. So, which is better? Is the MetaQuest Pro the world's best VR headset money can buy? That still really depends. Just pure image quality, I think the MetaQuest Pro is great, but not the best, especially when compared to headset like Fabio Aero. For all of you playing on the Quest 2, yes, Quest Pro look a lot better, but there are lots of other VR, AR, and MR headset out on the market than Meta brand alone. We are curious to compare PlayStation VR 2 to MetaQuest Pro and the Vavio. For a standalone VR headset, MetaQuest Pro is currently the best just by the fact that the image quality is so close to Vavio Arrow. For MR usage, we are curious to compare MetaQuest Pro to Vavio XR3 so we can correctly benchmark MetaQuest Pro. I don't agree with some of the internet statement about Meta using us as their beta tester. Meta deserves some credit to be at the forefront of MR headset development and make it cheap enough for enthusiasts like us to own it, to create with it. Not like other reviewers, I pay for my MetaQuest Pro right here and I can say that I don't regret my purchase at all. Think about it, Vavio XR3, a next-gen VR MR headset, costs around 6,000 US dollar, and Magic Leap 2 costs around 3,000. It gives you perspective when you compare price. I'm sure there will be tons of games and apps rushing to support MetaQuest Pro very, very soon, and Meta is going to continue to make it better for us to use it. What do you think? comment below and start a discussion. In the next video, we will work on a VR filmmaking focus episode on the MetaQuest Pro, help you to be more productive inside VR and how Quest Pro can help you make that money back if you are an artist with the power of AI and the new MR technology. So don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in the metaverse soon.